Welcome to Book World with Karen Rayborn. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Karen Rayborn. In case you're new here, this is the book Shreds, and Ten Shreds of Tenderness by John Ruganda. Yes, so in this book, we, we let's go straight to the characters. We have the three main characters, Stella, Odie and Wack. And these are siblings, Stella and Odie, together with Wack, who is their stepbrother. And so, when you read this book, you're going to realize that uh, it was a, a result of war that took place during that time after colonialism. There was war, and during this time, a lot of families were separated, people were separated from each other, some flew out of the country to the diaspora, some remained in... Uh, in Uganda, according to what we're getting in this book, some remained, but some had to flee away. So from this book, we get to see that whatever happened in this book uh, was as, as a result of the war. Odi, as the character in the book, we see that this is the person that remained in, in Africa during the period that these people were running away. Some Africans were running away because of war. He remained, and having remained in this book, he considers himself as the hero because he stayed behind to fight for the country, to fight for the peace of the nation, to fight for the land, to fight for the land uh, and uh, the properties and all uh, of you and the inheritance that were in the land. So Odi is considered as someone who is now the hero. And he considers himself as the hero in this book, as we are going to hear as we continue analyzing the book. So again, we have the characters, sorry. We have the characters, uh, Wak. Wak is now considered as someone who is a pest, running away. Uh, uh, someone is afraid and a pest, running away and then just coming back to enjoy whatever was left. And now we see <clears throat> him as that character. And this, then we have another character who is Stella. Stella is the lady in this book that uh, come, uh, undergoes a lot. Even though at the beginning of the book we think that Stella is also innocent, but we come to realize that he was, she was not innocent at all because a lot of things that happened that around her made her not to be so innocent as we thought in the book. So directly let's go to the characters in the book as we analyze them one by one with whatever they did. Stella, this, is, this was someone who is conspiring to be a nun, living in the con convent together with other nuns, trying to get education from there. And this war, as it erupted, Stella was forced to now uh, stay there. And during the time, we had these uh, officers who could go into these convents into the places of gathering and interfering with the peace of people there. And Stella was one of the people who were, who were the victims because at some point Stella was raped. And having been having raped, uh, Stella was now pregnant for these officials, the um, officers that were going there to assist them. But instead taking advantage of them, Stella was raped, got pregnant, and was now hospitalized. But again, Stella, even though this happened, and then the same people that did this, uh, the same people that uh, led to the de demise of their father, and even though all this happened, Stella didn't even consider all that. After coming out and everything is now cool, Stella is now found walking around with the same officer that uh, um, led to all this, the death of the father and all this, it's like you're you are going to sympathize with the same people that did wrong to you. So this is what Stella did. And we can't consider Stella as someone who is innocent in this book because if Stella is going to be innocent, then everyone else is. As a lady, you're undergoing all this, but instead of just keeping off from these people and just chasing after what you think is right instead stella goes back and has a thing with the same same people that did all this again we have uh, um, odie odie in the book is considered as someone who is a hero at the beginning of the book we can see that he's playing with some jar of insect trying to practice how murder and if, uh, how murder can be conducted and even asked at some point uh, what makes a murder a tick 
in short he's try, is trying to revenge in a way revenging in this insects in this book in the jar trying to mistreat them trying to uh, shoot them with the guns imitating the sounds of bullets and what have you as you can see in the book trying to humiliate them the same way the officials or the government officials humiliated the people and this we, we could also think that at the beginning that he was not if it was not he was not okay upstairs but then we get to see it it might also be a way of covering up because he knew what he was doing all through the book he knew all the uh, atrocities that he caused the brother and what have you so we get to see that even though we could think that he was now the hero of this book Odi is not the hero of the book because even the demise of the brother, you get to realize that it was Odi that sets up the brother by telling the officers or the officials of where the brother was. Because uh, there's a time work was teaching about the inevitable road that will lead us back to democracy to the university to students. And though uh, Odi was, was the brother, he was also the government agent. And as the government urgent, he had to set the brother up. And setting the brother up, the brother had to look for a way to run away to save his snake. Because these people were not going to spare you if they find you. And as a result of that, he's, he, he runs away from the country and even goes to the diaspora. But going there, now Odi thinks that work is now the weak person, the person who who, who is... Um, afraid and runs away instead of staying behind and fighting for the for the nation that is not the thing that happened really so we get to see that even though he was a family member here he sets up the brother this is the stepbrother sets up the brother and we get to see that it was a result of sibling rivalry it, it we came to learn in the book that the brother was so much loved the father and at some point, even work was considered to take some inheritance. And because Odi was not okay with this, he decided to look for a way that is going to uh, eliminate the brother so that he can take all the inheritance. When work was away, he even went ahead to uh, uh, bring up posters or news on the radio stations and all that jotted written. Let me, let me read it directly to you. He could still look for these things uh, to cover up for the death of the brother and even to announce to people that the brother is really dead. So that whatever he's going to do is going to be is going to be okay because he thinks that I'm doing all this because my brother is no more. My brother is dead. And all this comes to be unveiled at the end of the book. And the, in the inside the book, as we continue reading, we get to see whatever happened and what, what were the plans really that it was announced everywhere that work was dead, even though that was not the case. And he uses this to cover up. All this leads now to sibling rivalry. The three are not in, in good terms, especially Odi and work are not in good terms. They are not able to even talk to, talk to each other or even communicate about anything together. But what they do is just to exchange words for no reason and we can see that at some point at some extent we see stella asking the brother the brothers you should not fight remember that you are brothers and then Odi insists that he's not my brother he's just an half brother he's just a my step brother is not my real brother and this is now the sibling rivalry that we can see the strife that was in the family just because of the family inheritance they wanted to him uh, odi wanted to inherit whatever the father left behind to some to an extent of even burying the brother they they organized for a ceremony a session and did that so that it could be so clear that work is now dead and then work now comes back work is now back Someone who was announced all over the radio and everywhere that he was dead now comes back. And he's not really coming back to inherit anything, but he's coming back to make peace with the family. Because there are now the three of them. And coming back to make uh, peace with the family, we can see that work 
even though he was away he also underwent some some kind of torture you can imagine living away from your home living away from your family in trouble in all the stress no one no one to talk to no one to uh, understand you no one to tell about whatever you're going through or even to support you through it and it was just a hell of uh, uh, things happening to him because uh, there's no way we can say just decide to think that those people that stay in the nation and uh, try to create peace they don't even try but those people that remain behind there's no way you can conclude that these are the hero because they stayed behind but those people who go they also uh, undergo a lot of torture uh, emotional damage physical and they don't just talk about it it's more than just the physical beatings that people that stay behind undergo so work now stays there no one to talk to no one to support him no one to understand him around but now what can he do what does he have to do but to stay there until everything is now uh, somehow cool he can now come back and coming back meeting the brother the brother now is so insecure and thinks that uh, my brother work has just come back to take back inheritance from me because he was now ready to inherit everything he was confident that the brother was no more and now the brother comes back this brings insecurity this rivalry this strife the family inheritance brought about all the strife in them in the between the siblings and at some point they could not even um, speak as brothers okay so uh, to talk about it again i, I will say that um, we also had work wandering there is this character that we see in the book called Katalikawe. Katalikawe was a drop out, drop out. And then when work comes back, Katalikawe is now uh, someone who owns a lot of properties and there's like this was a, a, a school drop out. How is it now possible that he's now the the wealthiest person around, the someone who is now wealthy? I, I know what you know what I mean. So work wonders how is it possible it means that even those that remained behind they were really not fighting they were really not fighting for the peace of people but instead what they were doing was just to take whatever they could and to benefit themselves i mean so we get to see also that in the book and then um, this this all this that were happening was as a result of the military coup uh, the political, the, these were the effects of political, social, and the um, economic well-being of this nation. Those were the effects. The war brought about all these effects: the social, the political, the economic. And now this Katalikawe could now uh, grumble or uh, or um, yeah, scramble, scramble and pick. A big portion for himself a lot of people most of them those people that were uh, the government agents most of them did that and then there are some people that were affected socially like families were disintegrated someone had to live from the other side the other person lives in the other side and there was no closeness the families were disintegrated and we can also see the social the economic and all these that are happening during this period so these are as a result of the military coup that took place during that time and so when you read this book you get to see that it's just more more than who thinks that i am this who fought uh, when we, we just pick uh, one part of it and talk about who really fought can we say that the people that remained behind are the people that fought and ensure that there was peace in the nation not really and uh, we don't also have the confidence to say that those people that went ahead who were just who were tortured and faced a lot of difficulties uh, being away from their family are also the same people who fought fighting here depends on from which perspective you're going to view it all but to me i, I would think that work because of a lot of uh, torture that he faced and it, it can just be it cannot be physical just as um Odi, because Odi, to some extent there's a time he, he wanted he wanted to go and take the body of uh, the the father to come and bury give it a uh 
honorable burial but it was not possible this was not possible because the government refused and as a result he was then tortured which is still okay we can say that he, as a result there, there was the physical beating but i i think that those people that go those people that are affected mentally through this war those people even though they're not uh, beaten physically but uh, mentally they are affected emotionally they are affected they undergo a lot of things compared to those people that are just beaten you still have the scars but you have the memories you the torture what you underwent and so uh, i can say that even though odi thought he was the hero in the book we get to see that he was not even not even stella was the hero uh, but all of them had weaknesses and this separation in the family was just as a result of this war that was taking place during this time and some uh, other uh, to finish with we get to see that even though they speak about uh, um, don't you have any shreds of tenderness in you don't you have any shreds of tenderness in you this word has been used in the book the shreds of tenderness have been used in the book and don't you have that just means that don't you have some love don't you have some kindness in you don't you care don't you have shreds the bits you don't you have some bits of love in you so we get to see that um, what, everything that what was happening during this time or period there was no kindness there was no love everything and that is why it led to separation of people you can imagine your own brother setting you up just because he's now a government official and now they confessed uh, work coming back led to them having uh, restoring back their relationship by confession they confessed whatever happened in the book at the end we can see that even though they did all that they got to a point of confessing and then even at the, as the book ends we get to see they join together and talk Odi talks about on the contrary i have discovered my mind and you may not believe this both of you i'm not doing this to prove i'm not cow i'm no coward no pun intended thanks all the same work thanks and you see thank you so this these statements down here that statement down here can show us that Odi was the tough one here. And Odi now coming back to his senses and asking for forgiveness from the brother and sister by saying, thanks, all the same work, thanks. And you see, thank you. That means that the, the, there was no reunion between these people. Even though uh, the meeting was not okay, the meeting was not the best, but at the end, we get to see that they come back together as siblings. So these are just the effects of war. Whatever happened during war, there are separation of families, separation, sibling rivalry. People think that uh, some people do certain things just to gain something. And then whatever the sibling had for each other, it was now unveiled. No one knew that work, uh, the work could not even imagine that at some point, Odi was not okay with him being close to the father. But this is someone that, that's something that was eating up Odi until this period when we come to see that he's now doing this just to set up the brother and even to put up information in the media about the death of the brother. So, sorry. So, that is what, uh, uh, briefly, that's the, just a, a brief summary of the book. If you want to get the full details of this book, just grab a copy, read it, and you're going to enjoy and even learn about what, more things that I've not even talked about. So thank you so much for watching until this, the end of this video. Thank you so much for always coming back and watching my videos. And until then, I want to say bye and remember to subscribe to my channel. Remember, we are on the road to a thousand subscribers kindly. Let's get to a thousand subscribers by the end of March. Thank you so much and have a blessed time.